everyone, and welcome to episode two of the Best Day Ever podcast. This is a podcast about crafting and uh, a glimpse into my crafting journey. My name is Trisha, and I'm your host. I can be found on Instagram and Ravelry as Tie Dye Diva, and show notes can be found in the description box for each episode. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me again, and an extra special, special welcome to any new viewers that we have. Um, before I get started, I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to everyone who, um, to just all the love and support that was shown to me uh, because of this podcast. If you subscribe to the podcast, if you watched it, if you tag someone on Instagram about the podcast, if you join the Ravelry group, yes, I have created a Ravelry group for the podcast. Um, if you told someone about the podcast, if you sent me a message of encouragement before I even started the podcast, thank you so, so much. It really, really means a lot. Um, there were a few things I did not uh, mention at the outset of the first um, episode. Um, I think I was really nervous when I started, so I'm a little bit calmer this time, hopefully. Um, but I have, I am starting on a cup of coffee, so I might seem a little bit jittery. But I have some essential some oils from Young Living. I love their oils. So usually after a long day at work, which today was, it's been a lot of long days at work. Um, I'll come home and I'll fix a cup of tea or coffee and I'll diffuse some oils because I love aromatherapy to just calm me and center me after a really day or week. So I've got that going and um, so let's get started. I do want to talk about some administrative things before I get into the meat of the podcast. Um, let's talk about some prizes. At the last episode, I talked about wanting to award a prize to someone who shared um, their best day ever moment as it relates to crafting. We had a lot of people who gave comments on the YouTube channel. Some gave comments in the Ravelry group. And thank you so much. I read every single one. I think I responded to every single one. And some of them were just so amazing. Some people um, wrote that their best day ever moment was making a sweater for themselves, their first sweater that actually fit. I can definitely identify with that. Um, some people mentioned about um, learning what their true passion was when it comes to crafting, finding a craft that really spoke to their heart, um, how that was their best day best day ever moment. And a couple of people just said that watching this podcast um, made their day. It was like a best day ever moment for them. So thank you so much for those sweet words. And um, I think as we hear... Um, other people's successes and what really makes them happy and pumps them up when it comes to crafting, um, the more excited we'll be about crafting. I think that's kind of the, the, the way I'm trying to go with this podcast, to just um, engender excitement for what we do because we're just so blessed to have uh, whatever craft it is that we do. And it's just a wonderful thing. So the the prizes. I didn't go into detail about how the prizes would actually work. So what I'm thinking is that um, for the first prize, which I will draw um, in the month of April, I'll do a show in April and I will announce a prize for whoever um, either puts a message on the YouTube channel about what their best day ever moment is or either a message on the Ravelry group about what their best day moment is as it relates to crafting and we'll draw, I'll get all those names together and I'll do a random number generator and we'll come up with uh, one uh, winner for the month of March. And uh, going forward for the month of April and going forward, uh, we'll just be choosing um, names from the Ravelry group alone. So I hope that makes sense. So for the, the April prize drawing, um, if you put a message on YouTube or on in the Ravelry group, we'll put all those names together and that will be the drawing for the month of March. Sorry, for the month of April. And then going forward, May and going forward, um, just comments on the in the Ravelry group. So for every episode, I'm going to put a, a, um, a discussion uh, for each episode and that's where you'll be able to share your best day ever moments. I had a lot of best day ever moments this past month, these past few weeks. Starting this podcast was definitely one. 
Um, and hopefully I'll get a chance to share with you um, what was possibly my absolute best day ever moment a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I will hope to be able to share that with you. But let me tell you what the prize is for the month. So let's talk about the uh, first prize that, that we will be giving away. It's got all of this basket here. So we have a skein of sock yarn from Fiber Story. This is a Fiber Story Fave sock yarn. It's a 100% merino and it's 400 yards, 365 meters, and the color is jam. And this camera is capturing the color pretty good. Maybe it's a little bit more purple than pink. But um, this was generously donated by a podcast viewer and um, a recent um, friend on Instagram. Her name is Amanda Barnett. And on Instagram, she can be found as a Barnett 1587 Amanda was actually the fiber share partner that I sent to. Uh, was it last month? I believe she loved everything that I sent to her and she's a really sweet girl and she was just so appreciative and I didn't ask for this. This just came in the mail out of the blue along with some teas and just the sweetest little note. And so I asked her if um, she mind if I actually use the skein of yarn for um, a podcast uh, giveaway. But that I was going to keep the tea. <laughs> so, um, yes. So I'm going to include this for the first prize drawing. It's really pretty. Squishy and soft. So a skein of sock yarn. Some uh, needles. I don't, I'm not needles. Scissors. I don't know about you, but I am always losing my scissors. And I kind of like to have one in each one of my project bags. So this is the, hopefully will really come in handy. And a little measuring ruler which is also good to keep in your project bag or your notions bag goes all the way up to six inches and this is from sunshine fiber arts both the uh, scissors and ruler came from my stash and then i decided to include also from my stash a skein of uh, sugar and cream 100 percent cotton i believe it's a worsted weight if you are doing the yarn hoarder dish cloth challenge like I and so many others are, this will really come in handy. And I thought it was nice because it would coordinate with uh, the other things. I can't promise that all the prizes are going to coordinate like this. It just kind of worked out. And um, finally, also donated by a very generous friend, podcast viewer, and just all around good person. Deb, who is my desire on um, Instagram. I'm gonna to link to all these folks so that you can um, know who they are and see some of the amazing things they're also doing as it relates to crafting. But Deb generously um, donated one of these much coveted bracelet rulers. It's 100% leather. And it's an adjustable bracelet. It is so cool. I actually own one of these in the color orange, of course. But um, yeah, so if you don't already have one of these, then this is your chance to actually win it. So Deb, thank you again for this um, prize. So all of these things are, will be going to one podcast viewer. Like I said, in the month of April, when I um, record, maybe in a couple of weeks from now, today is March 27th, I believe. So in a couple of weeks, I hope to be able to record again, maybe two or three more weeks. And I will tell you who's going to be the winner of all of these wonderful goodies. Okay. I think that's it as far as the business things I need to discuss. So let's get into the meat of the podcast. Let's talk about some finished objects, uh, a few things I'm working on, and I have a tiny bit of uh, sewing, actually quilting, to show you today. If we have time, I really try hard. I don't want this, um, any episode, really, to ever go over one hour. So hopefully um, I can accomplish that. So just sit back and relax get a cup of something warm or cold and I hope you enjoy the things I'm about to show you so the first thing um, I will talk about are some finished objects I had a pretty productive um, 
few weeks, despite the fact that work has been unbelievably busy, I was able to finish a couple of things. And I guess I should start with the biggest thing. Um, the last time I recorded, I showed you a top-down sweater that I was working on that um, I was not using a pattern for. And I actually was able to finish it. I, I finished it last night, as a matter of fact. So here she is. I'm showing you this portion because remember I said um, I love knitting top down sweaters because it gives you the flexibility of um, deciding where you want to go with the sweater. You could change the, the bodice, you could change the bottom. Um, once you get that fit, that um, under the um, arm fit and the bust fit going, the possibilities are endless as far as design is concerned. So what I decided to do with this sweater is I, once I had the fit that I wanted, I just knit straight down. I didn't do any shaping for the, um, for the waist. I just knitted straight down. And then on the left side, I decided to do some increases, which is gonna give me like this asymmetric look for the sweater. It's really hard to see just holding it like, I think you can see it pretty good though. And the way I achieved this was by placing a marker right at the side of the sweater. And then I would knit two together, one stitch before the marker and one stitch after the marker. I'm going to, if that's not making sense, I'm going to try to um, explain that a little bit better on my Ravelry page. It fits really, really well. I, the only thing that I wish is that perhaps I would have started the increases a little bit higher and then that may would have given me a lot more flare or a longer um, drape on the side. I'm going to try to insert a picture of me actually wearing the sweater in here now. But other than that, I absolutely love the sweater. And you may also notice that I have the sweater inside out so you can see the the pearl side, the reverse stocking inside. I kind of like the way it looks inside out. If you've seen, there are a lot of patterns on Ravelry that feature that look where the stockinette portion isn't showing, but the pearl portion is showing. And it works really well, even with this worsted weight and, um, and Rowan kit silk haze held together. Can you see the halo on that? This sweater is so squishy and soft. I don't know if it's if the camera is picking it up or doing it much justice. The um, hem is a broken rib, knit a row, knit one, purl one. So first, first row is knit, second row is knit one, purl one. Knit a row, knit one, purl one. And that gives you the broken stockinette and that's what it looks like on the opposite side. So I'm calling this sweater a reversible sweater. Again, that's why I love top down. So, so many options, so many ways you can go when you knit a sweater top down. And this is what it looks like on the right side. I love it. We are heading into spring, even though we had snow last week or the second day of spring. That was so wacky. But I don't know if I'm gonna get a chance to wear this until next season, unless um, it's a cool day for Maryland sheep and wool, in which case I will wear it then. But yep, she's all done. Um, I'm gonna to link to some, um, what I have found to be the best um, resources for designing or drafting your own top-down sweater and the best that I've seen so far is from Karen Templer who is the proprietor of the a friend supply company she has some amazing information on the blog on her blog about how to start your own top-down sweater so I'm gonna link to that um, and maybe I um, if you have any questions about what I didn't say, I feel like there's so much more I could say about this sweater. Um, as far as fit, what I didn't say, I feel like there's so much more I could say about this sweater. Um, as far as fit, 
they there are a few modifications I do because I do tend to carry a lot more weight in my back and my front and in my bust area that I do when I'm knitting my top down sweater so if you're in that position too and you like some more detail about how I achieve a really good fit I'd be more than happy to share that with you but yes I'm so so happy to have this done and I, it's gonna provide a lot of warmth as you can see it is short sleeve so I plan on wearing a lightweight t-shirt underneath which will give even more warmth so that's one sweater done for the year of the sweater I would love to knit as many sweaters as possible this season next up are some a ton of dish towels that dish cloths that I finished I am doing as I said the yarn hoarder dish cloth challenge I've drank that kool-aid and am loving it so let me just show you briefly that's one done this is uh, a cotton that I got from Hobby Lobby and it's so pretty I think this is one of the ones I was working on when I recorded the um, last episode this is almost like a little diamond shape going on there I didn't notice that until just now this one here and this stitch I can't remember what this stitch is but I'll link to it it's a crochet stitch all of these are crochet actually and finished on the edge this one here is a two row repeat another crochet dish cloth I believe it is a row of double crochet and then a row of single crochet and again single crochet all the way around if you're trying to work on your crochet stitches this doing dish cloths is an excellent way to do that you could practice your stitches and this is not these aren't straight by any means but when you is there something about doing the edging of single crochet um, around the dish cloth after you have finished it covers a lot of mistakes so that's a little tip this one here is a combination of the yarn I had left over from the first one I showed you and then the second one. So I just did a little color blocking on this one. Let's see here. And this is just, I believe this is a single crochet alternating with a single crochet through the back loop. I believe that's what this particular one is. I don't even think I followed a pattern for this. I just was just freestyling this is one I've really been enjoying this one this one almost has like a corrugated rib look to it and it's knit it's not knit crocheted on the diagonal so it, it starts here and it increases all the way till you get to the size you want and then you start decreasing of course I need to weave these ends in so I did a lot of these because I really enjoyed that stitch so this is what it looks like when you're about halfway done, almost like a, a or it is like a triangle. And I was telling a friend of mine, um, I really enjoyed this stitch. I can totally see myself knitting just this portion and going as wide as I want it to go and making some cute little crochet head scarves for when I'm outside gardening or having a bad hair day. Uh, this one here is... I think I'm not sure what this stitch is but it is crochet like I said I'll just go on YouTube or I'll just Google free uh, dishcloth patterns and I'm just I'll just I just knit them up while I'm watching TV I think this is supposed to be a mesh but I used a much larger or smaller hook so the mesh isn't showing up too good again this one was a bit on the crooked side but you do that single crochet around and it just I don't know, just brings everything together. And I believe this is sugar and cream cottons. Very inexpensive, about two bucks each. And here's another of the crochet ones, crocheted on the diagonal. And I ran out of yarn, so I just used some lighter yellow that I had. This is actually one of my favorites loving these and because it's corrugated my sister she's already fallen in love with this I want to make her a nice set um, she's really into skincare and because it's got that corrugated it's I think this will make a great exfoliant 
yeah that feels good for the face and the body and my favorite stitch is this one here it's almost like a if you can see it's got a lot of texture on it like a bubble stitch almost I think this would make a beautiful cowl again I will link to all of these patterns super easy one row repeat two row repeat I'm sorry for this particular dishcloth so if I'm counting correctly I am completely on track for February and for yep these are no this is seven I think I got another one laying around here somewhere anyway I think I'm on track for February and for March for the dishcloth challenge. I only did one in February and I felt really bad. I was like, come on, Trish. Surely you can crochet one dishcloth a week. It takes like an hour. So I kind of like put the pedal to the metal and got busy on those. So it feels good to be all caught up with those. Let me get a sip of coffee. Another finished object I want to share with you is this cow that I completed. It's basically a tube. This is the Slip Stitch Cow by Arthella Posey. Arthella is known as Eris Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. And Arthella is a very good knit friend. And we also recently found out that we're somewhat related by marriage long story but anyway another sweet beautiful soul this is the slip stitch cow a very simple repeat you're just knitting in the round and you're doing a knit one slip one at the beginning of every new color and that's what creates that pretty jagged edge there i knit this out of uh luxadorna knits cashmere so this is a 100 percent cashmere cow so let me show this try this on so you can see what this looks like this is just like one of those perfectly snug cozy things you want to have on your neck when it's really cool in the office or if you want to just have a night on the town with the cute like boho chic skirt and flip-flops and it's kind of cool outside and you have a denim jacket on. That's how I envision wearing this. Just lots of possibilities. But it's so cozy and so, it's just beautiful. Let's see if I can move this camera. There we go. Sorry about moving the camera there. Absolutely beautiful. I love this. I um, knit this on a, with the size uh, 4, US 4 needle. I think I use my higher, higher sharps to knit this. So again, it's just a tube and then you kitchener it together. And that's it. So like I said, this, uh, I use the Luxadorna Knits uh, fun bundles to knit this. I'm going to link to the yarn that I use to knit this with and um, Something else I was going to say about this. So I am actually entered this into two different knit-alongs. Um, I love the, um, let's see, which the Treehouse Knits podcast, which is hosted by Rachel. She was doing a kit-along, which ends at the end of March, I believe. So I need to get this submitted into her Ravelry group. Um, and then I also entered it into the Yarniacs. Um, self-indulgent knit along so that's the knit along that ran from January to March I believe so just a time to just self-indulge and knit yourself something a lot of us do a lot of knitting for charity a lot of knitting for other people so this self-indulgent knit along is something they do every year and um, it's a time to just do something for yourself because a lot of times we have trouble just letting go and doing for ourself. I know that's something that I need to work on. I'm getting better at it. So this is wonderful, so squishy and absolutely beautiful. So that's one, another finished object. 
And uh, yeah, I think that's it for the finished objects that I have. I um, Let's move on into some works in progress. One work in pro pro progress that I talked about the last time was a shawl, a rectangular shawl, five colors, knit on the bias. And that pattern is called Sky's the Limit. It's designed by the Plucky Knitter. And I showed you the colors that I was going to use. And I actually started on that shawl and have made a lot of progress. But it is in my car. And my husband <laughs> took the car to run some errands. So I'm going to try to insert a picture of how much progress I've got on it. That. Have you ever knit a project or, in, or worked on any project and you were enjoying it so much you're just sad for it to be over? That's how I feel about my shawl. I am loving it so much. The plucky Primo worsted and I'm working with some plucky trusty. Um, what other bases am I using? I think those are the only two bases that I'm using. So I'm just like mixing the bases and it's just simple and easy. Oh, one thing I will tell you, I am not one that goes for a lot of complicated patterns. I like simple, easy things that don't require a lot of brain space. My brain space now is taken up with a lot of things like work and and and, and health and caregiving and being a, a mom still and being a wife. So I just like easy, simple knits and I like to let the beautiful yarn shine through those knits. So I, I would like to to um, work on some more complicated things. I can see myself um, knitting a, a, one, a cable sweater with cables all over it. That's kind of like a dream knit for me. I would love to be able to do that one day. But for the most part, it's really the simple knits that let the yarn do all the talking. So hopefully by the next time I record, I will be able to share that with you as a finished object. Um, two more whips. Works in progress. I wanted this is my stock yarn memories blanket, and uh, it hasn't gotten a lot of love here lately, but that's going to change. I really kind of committed to myself to finish this up this year, so I really better get moving. This is I'm sure you've seen this on many other podcasts and many other people who are knitting this. They're just simple, simple mitered squares. Again, mindless knitting, but with a beautiful impact. And I'm having a lot of fun working on this. So that's my sock yarn memories blanket. And this is hanging out in just a big old tote <laughs> from Fiber Space, which is one of our local yarn stores. It's absolutely fabulous. And also in this bag is just a ton of minis I've gotten from so many different places. I've got minis all over the place. So, sock yarn memories blanket. And I'm hoping to, like I said, give that a lot of love. I'm making sure this needle isn't going to come out of that square that I'm working on. Um, one final work in progress when it comes to, that I'm going to share with you, um, are a pair of mittens that I started. I have been bitten, like so many of you, by the Norwegian mitten knitting bug. I can gratefully blame um, Rachel of Treehouse Knits for uh, engendering that um, the excitement that she has for knitting the Norwegian mitten. She's actually hosting a mitt. In the year, I think I called it a mitt along the last time. It's that's not what it's called. It's called the year of the mitten, and she is hosting that along with Patricia, who is P4 Chin on Ravelry. And um, she has a beautiful um YouTube uh, podcast, I believe she calls it a vlog. Um, and they together are doing a year long year of the mitten knit along. And um, one of the books that they suggested for choosing patterns for the knit along is this book here. It's called Mittens from Around Norway. And it is written by Nina 
Grandlin Sather, I believe I'm saying her name correctly. Um, I had definitely gotten out of the habit of buying books. I think the year of the, the um, technology bug has caught, in a, caught a lot of us and we've kind of gotten away from buying books instead of reading. Instead, we tend to read a lot of things on our iPhones and on our iPads and other electronic devices. But when Rachel showed this book on her podcast a few weeks ago, probably a couple of months ago, I just knew I had to have it. And I'm not disappointed. This book is absolutely beautiful. It's one of those books where even if you don't knit, you will enjoy the beautiful photography in this book. Each of the patterns are charted. At the beginning of the book, it just gives you a general idea of how the mittens are knit. And uh, it's just so, so beautifully illustrated. Just picture after picture. And not only are the mittens illustrated, there's a story behind every picture, either about the family or about the region from which the mittens came. So you're getting an education as well when you um, when you knit these mittens. And if you're someone like me, I'm not a well-traveled person. Um, I love to travel, but I have not been to a lot of places. Um, that's one of the many things I love about crafting. Um, I have discovered that um, in a lot of ways, I feel like I am traveling when I knit, especially if I'm knitting something that has its roots in a country that I've never been to or have don't know a lot about, to be able to um, to knit and to learn the history of a particular thing that I'm knitting through a person or through a book, I think that is just priceless. And also, not just the history, but the geography of certain areas is just um, wonderful. And I've been able to impress my husband because he is the geography buff. And I have embarrassed myself so many times by my lack of geographical knowledge. But um, yeah, this, this book definitely takes you into the country of Norway and into the history of Norway. And also um, Patricia of the Nitography of vlog or podcast, um, highly highly recommend her podcast i just recently started watching it and the excitement and the love she has for the country of norway is just absolutely amazing it is very infectious she's actually an, an american um living in norway and um she talks about what her goals and what her dreams are um as far as starting a farm um and having sheep there on her land so I highly, highly, highly recommend her podcast. And Nina, who is the writer of this book, was kind enough to um, reach out to me on Instagram and thank me for knitting a pair of her mittens from out of the book. And let me see if I can quickly find the pattern, yep, that I am working on. These are the mittens that I've decided to knit first. And the name of these mittens are Mittens from Song. S-O-G-N, Mittens from Song. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Love, love, love this book. I got it from Amazon. Even if you don't intend to knit any Norwegian mittens, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a, it's beautiful. It's just, it even smells good. Just one of those books you just want to turn the pages over and over again. So let me show you without delay the progress that I've made on my mittens from song there we go I'm about halfway through with this I am thoroughly enjoying the process of these mittens they are absolutely a joy to knit as I mentioned um, not long ago a lot of the patterns I knit tend to be very simple this to color work knitting it is very simple but it's not the kind of knitting where you can just zoom 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 through um rows you really have to take your time and read the charts 
And I love that because I do tend, sometimes I do think that I tend to like kind of um, rush through my knitting. You can't do that with these. You have to just focus and take your time and just enjoy the process. And even though for me this is slower knitting than what I usually do, I'm still really, really, really enjoying these. I'm knitting these with Plymouth Galway Sport in a beautiful burgundy and gray color. I am worried that these are going to be a bit small for my hands, but I know a lot of women who have hands that are smaller than mine who would probably be very happy to get these as a gift. So I'm slowly plugging away on these. I've also learned by watching other podcasters who are doing the um, Year of the Mitten Knit Along that the choice of yarn when knitting these Norwegian mittens makes all the difference difference in the world. So a lot of um, people have, have recommended the uh, Finogarn yarn, which is a Norwegian, I think it's a Norwegian wool, um, and the Woolly Thistle which is a yarn store in the U.S. that brings all of these wonderful yarns from around the world um, here in the U.S. and then we don't have to pay, um, which is sometimes a um, very large shipping cost for some of the yarns from far, far away. So it's nice to have the Woolly Thistle who is, excuse me, who is doing that for us. And so I did place an order through the Woolly Thistle for some of the more appropriate yarns for these um, these beautiful mittens and I will be able to hopefully be able to share that with you the next time I record. These mittens are hanging out in this project bag that I made. Isn't it beautiful? Look at all of the beautiful embroidery on this bag. Do you know how much work it would take to do this embroidery? But I didn't do it. <laughs> I did not do the embroidery on this. This is a DIY project, another DIY project that I did following a YouTube tutorial. And the name is escaping me. Hopefully I'll be able to put it right down below. Oh my goodness, my brain. Anyway, this is the turn a placemat into a project bag. DIY tutorial that I found on YouTube. Let me show you what this bag looked like before it was a bag. This is a placemat. Isn't that amazing? Placemats are perfect for project bags because they're already lined. And if you are, a, you don't even have to be a great sewer to do this. I am working on becoming a more um, precise seamstress. But it's so simple. You just fold it. You insert the zipper. You sew up the sides and you box the corners and you're done. You are done. So from this to this in like 20 minutes so much fun. I will definitely link to the YouTube tutorial. I can't believe I can't think of the name, but I would, yes, like I said, I will link to it. So I hope you try this. The possibilities are endless. I'm looking at my stack of, um, of placemats that I have starting to hoard just like yarn. <laughs> so, um, so much fun. So much fun. And like I said, you can Get some really fancy looking placemats and wow all your friends. And I just put a little spare earring. This was an earring. I lost one of them and I hung it onto one of these, these hooks. And that's my zipper pull. So there it is. A bag from a placemat. How simple is that? How wonderful is that? Okay, so that's it for uh, all the knitting and crochet. Let's do a little bit of um, sewing talk before we get into acquisitions. Um, a little bit of quilting talk. I want to share with you that I am a part of what is called a quilting bee. 
And let me just explain to you briefly what a quilting bee is. So a quilting bee is a group of people, women or men, who um, come together and what we, what well the way we do it is we, it is a group of 12 women from all over the world, from the US, I'm as far as California, I'm here in Washington DC. We have women in Australia in our group, from the UK, um, am I forgetting somewhere else? So um, we have become acquaintances with one another and are developing wonderful friendships. And what we do is we knit, we sew a quilting square for each member of the bee. So at the end of the year, you have 12 squares, enough to create your own quilt. And the book that we are using is this book here. It is called The Modern Bee, and the author is Lindsay Connor. And this book is another wonderful, wonderful book. I am a novice quilter, and this book is so well written that I, even I am able to follow these patterns without a lot of instruction. I tend to be um, a very visual learner, I almost always have to have someone show me either through a video or just hands-on how to do something. So that's a testament to how well this book is, is made. Um, oftentimes with quilting, there are a lot of tutorials on technique, you know, how to get that quarter inch seam down, how to do accurate cutting. But there's there are just thousands, if not millions of different quilting patterns. So how well that pattern is written determines how well you're going to do at making it. And like I said, I think that's just a testament to how well this book is written. Even this square here, which it's got a, it looks simple, but there's quite a bit going on, especially with this tiny um, strip here where precision is absolutely um, important to execute this square right correctly but like I said it's really really well done so let me just show you one square that I have done the first person that I'm sending to chose this particular quilt the playing cards quilt and so again you choose the quilt that you want there are 12 or more uh, quilts in this book you choose the quilt you want, you choose the uh, color scheme you'd like, and almost everyone is using the Kona White as the background color. And and yeah, we just knit squares for, for each, we, we sew squares for each other and send them to um, each B member going down the list. So this is the first square that I've made. Joanna, if you are watching, um, this is a spoiler alert because this is your quilting square. So I'm going to give you a minute to turn away if you want to be surprised. So this is the playing cards quilt square. Joanna chose duck egg blues and top grays for her color with the white background. This is a very simple square. If you are interested in quilting, I highly recommend this book. I also highly recommend the uh, Craftsy class. That's how I really gained a lot of experience and knowledge um, about quilting. Um, and I will link to the, uh, the tutorial in particular that was very, very helpful to me on Craftsy. So yes, I'm having a, uh, the tutorial in particular that was very, very helpful to me on Craftsy. So yes, I'm having a lot of fun with this. I'm kind of behind on this. The, the goal is to, for me anyway, is to do one quilt, one square a month. So that by the end of the year, I'm all done. But I'm about two squares behind. So I've got a day off in a couple of days. So I hope to be able to get quite a bit um, of progress done on my quilting squares for the other two ladies. Um, also in regards to sewing, Another DIY tutorial from the Crafty Gemini. 
she did a tutorial not long ago on um, how to make your own leggings. Basically, by drafting a pattern from a pair of leggings you already have. And so that's what I did. I was able to draft my own pattern using craft paper. I apologize if this noise is annoying. So I've got my lines on there. I've got my seam allowance, my size, where it gets placed on the fold. These might be a bit too long, but again, you can always make adjustments to the pattern. So I'm hoping the next time I record, I have a pair of leggings made from that pattern. And this is the fabric that I chose to make them with. It is a knit. I think it's got pretty good stretch to it. I am a bit concerned about the print because the way the stretch is, that means that these prints are gonna be around my legs in a horizontal fashion, but I think, well, it wouldn't work vertically because that's not where the stretch is, so I have to go with the um, the stretch line, but we'll, we'll go with it. We'll see. We'll see how that works. We will definitely see if it's a, a fail or a success. Hopefully, it'll be a success. Um, let's see. I think that's it as far as what I've been working on. A, a few more things, but um, we'll save some of that for later. Let's talk about some acquisitions. I had a best day ever moment after having a really whew, rough morning at work. I think I even posted to Instagram a couple, was it last week? Um, just so busy, so many things going on. And I was just tired, just tired and overwhelmed. And one of my coworkers who's also a crafter just comes around the corner. She'd been on vacation and she just pops up at my desk like she all does so many times often. And, um, and says, here, this is for you. <laughs> this beautiful bat of fiber. Can you feel how amazingly soft this is? It's undyed and it's just naturally colored. And it's a yarn I've never, it's a fiber I've never spun before. This is from the Cold Valley Farm. And this is Jacob Sheep. And let me see, I don't know if this is going to come out, if you can actually see what those beautiful creatures look like. So I am really looking forward to spinning this up. I don't think we even have talked about spinning. Oh, so many things. We have only just begun. We have just scratched the surface of all the wonderful um, crafts there are to delve into. So Louise, thank you so much for making my day with this. I cannot wait to get this spun up. Uh, I will also share with you my fiber share package that was sent to me. And let me try not to have too much crinkling going on here. I just stuffed this all in one of my Fat Squirrel Speaks project bags. But this is everything that came in my fiber share package. So this beautiful skein of black trillium, which is 405 yards of a 8515 superwash merino and mulberry silk blend. That is absolutely beautiful. I can so totally see this as just a, a simple shawl. And she sent me four skeins of Let Lofi in this beautiful, so totally me color. It's like a beautiful burnt orange or russet orange. And I can also see this um, being a beautiful shawl, although I must admit I went online to price this and I thought about buying some more so that I can complete it and make a sweater out of it. Like I said on the last episode, I'm really trying to um, educate myself about the woolier wools, the more natural wools. And this isn't the first uh, lopi yarn that I've ever owned. So I'm really, really excited about this. So I have four of these. And she also sent a, a Lolo bar. 
in a natural scent. So this is wonderful because I suffer with chronic dry skin. You may have even noticed um, a really bad case of eczema on my hands. So this is great to put on before I start knitting. And finally, she sent me one of these, which is very helpful. It's the handy tool. So for picking up drop stitches, and I believe one end can be used as a cable needle. So yeah, this is just another one of those things that's great to have in your arsenal, in your project bag. So thank you, thank you so much for that. Also wanna share with you this beautiful skein of yarn that I got from the So Perfect Pearls Etsy shop. So Perfect Pearls is also a podcast which is hosted by Jade. If you have seen her podcast, she's absolutely delightful and has, just has an absolute zest for, um, for crafting. She is becoming an amazing spinner and I just love her cheery disposition on her podcast. Jade just opened up her Etsy shop. This is my second skein of yarn I purchased from her and just look at that. So great job on this Jade. And I didn't want to take it out of the package because if there's anything I love more than getting something really fun in the mail is getting something well packaged. Look at that. Just perfectly packaged and there's a little stitch marker there also. So. This might be the next pair of socks I cast on for myself when I actually knit a pair of socks for myself. Okay, just a few more things I wanna share with you. I had the opportunity to host a knitting, um, I won't call it a knitting gathering, let's just call it a maker's gathering. A couple of weeks ago, I had about, I think it was about 16 of us in my home if you can imagine the buzz and the excitement of having 16 makers all working on different things, the vibe, the positivity, just, it was just amazingly awesome. The chatter, the buzz, the excitement, the support was just amazing. And we had a ball. I actually had to make people stop what they were doing and go eat. I prepared a simple meal. Everyone else bought snacks and desserts. We had lots of wine and it was just so much fun. And as per usual, when we get together, there's lots of laughter, lots of love and lots of giving. I mean, just was not expecting to receive Look at that. How amazingly cute is that? This notions pouch. I love to have a notions pouch in every project bag because when I'm getting to the groove of knitting or crochet, I just I get annoyed when I have to get up to look for something like a pair of shears or or a, a stitch marker or whatever. So it's good to have these in every single uh, project bag that you have. And isn't that adorable? And it's orange. Mm. That looks like it's a piece of uh, wool made into a sheep. Oh, so cute. Yes, and this is felted. Absolutely love this. This was made by M.B. Moog, I believe that's what. Glasses, Trish. Uh, M.B. Moog, I believe, is the maker of this. So cute. Love it, love it, love it. Othella. <laughs> our little group, our little um, knitting group, um, we call ourselves Knitters with a Z. And so this is what Othella gifted to everyone. It's a little pin and it says, let's stick together. But look, it's a cactus. I love this. This is definitely going to end up on a project bag very, very soon. And Wanda, who is pickup stitch on Ravelry, gifted me this at the Makers Gathering. And Deb, who is my desire, who also gifted the um, the uh, the ruler, which is going to be a part of our prize in the month of April, gifted me this beautiful pin from Helen Stewart of the Curious Handmade 
audio podcast and this is from her Shaw Society so it says the Shaw Society and she makes some beautifully amazingly beautiful shawls so let's put everything here keep everything in order and then finally Harris Knits I've said her name a, a many times made this project bag for me because as I said we have declared this as the year of the sweater and she said that she was going to make sure she made everyone a project bag for their sweaters there's her beautiful tag and this is the fabric that I chose because I also have a shoe addiction in addition in addition to yarn and fiber and fabric and I'll place mats I love my shoes love my shoes and boots so look at the ample size of this bag look at that beautiful lining oh man great job on this Arthella so cute this is inter this is also it feels like it has some type of batting it's nice and squishy and soft so I love this oh, love it love it love it thank you Arthella but if you've been wondering about what this is behind me, I'm about to show you. If you, follow, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably have already seen it. Arthella, again, who is Harris Knits on Ravelry and Instagram, made me this beautiful sign. When I opened this up, I literally almost fell out of the chair. And that's saying something because I was sitting on my um, my countertop stool in my dining room. <laughs> I absolutely love and adore this. Where I have it sitting on my sewing table is not where it's going to stay. I'm trying to figure out the perfect place for it. But I love it. Look at that. I believe Arthella made this on her Cricut uh, machine. I don't know a lot about those machines. I don't know um, how they work, but I do know you can do some amazing things with them. So Arthella, thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot thank you enough for that. That's just, just, just the best. I think that is all that I have to share with you today. I'm looking at the, the aftermath, the podcast aftermath <laughs> over here, but that's what makers do. It's a creative mess is what it is, and we love it that way. Before I close, um, I just want to leave you with the thought of think about um, hosting a maker's gathering like I did. If you are in a crafting slump or you're not quite sure what to start working on next or you just need some inspiration, um, so when I posted the pictures to Instagram, so many makers were like, oh, I would love to do that. Oh, I wish I had a group in my area. And I just said, hashtag find your tribe, find a group of people, start it. Because there is nothing like being inspired by other makers. Um, my niece came, she's a brand new crocheter. And I think she was a little hesitant to come because she wasn't, she didn't feel that she was as experienced a crafter but of course we welcomed her in with open arms and she le also left out with a huge bag of yarn because we also had a yarn dish stash let me see if I can insert a picture of the yarn dish stash here but yes, so we, we it was just so much fun. And even if um, you don't know the people, you, you may not want um, to feel comfortable hosting in your home, you could do it in a library. Um, if you have a Wegmans or a similar a grocery store that has an area, a lounge area, it can be at a restaurant. Um, that's what it's all about, getting people together of like mind and just being inspired by others. I learned a lot um, when I was there. As I said, we had um, 
maybe I didn't mention we actually had a demonstration of a knitting machine the Addy turbo machine and I was able to make a hat for my husband I'll try to show that to you that's the one thing I did forget um, to bring so Deb who's my desire she bought the Addy knitting machine and I already had the table set up um, so that was a big hit um, I have my weaving loom on my dining room table which is where it stays unless I'm having a gathering and I need all eight seats um, so a couple people wanted to know how the weaving loom works. So I got to show the weaving loom. It was just so much fun. So um, try to think about um, doing that in your community. If not that, then just try to inspire someone else to uh, love crafting as much as you do. Maybe uh, by teaching someone who's uh, maybe having a hard time and needs something else to give them something to think about besides whatever issues they're working on. Just um, share the love, spread the love. I think that's all I have to share with you. Thank you so much for joining me today as I share with you some of the things that have made me so happy in my crafting world this month. Um, I think I told you last month that I was going to share with you what some of my goals were for the year. Um, but we're getting close up on an hour and um, I think I should cut things a little bit. But I will try to include that in the next podcast, which I hope will be in a week, in about two to three weeks from now. There I am rocking again. I said I was not going to rock on this podcast. <laughs> but that's what I do when I'm comfortable. I tend to like rock or either sway from side to side. So again, thank you for joining me. Uh, hope you have some best day ever moments when it comes to your crafting and I will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.